Hi there, and welcome back to our uh, introduction on how to configure and how to install Reaper. In the second part of this introduction, we are going to show you actually how to store your own configurations and uh, make your own shortcuts and store them or load somebody else's. Actually, first of all, we're going to load somebody else's and we're going to show how to make your own shortcuts later in this video. Um, so if we go over to uh, the screen here, which is a browser screen, is in the Google Drive. Uh, we have the assets of Reaper Learning. Uh, we've put some stuff together for you here. And um, if we look in the assets of the Reaper Learning tutorials, tutorial 0b, the config file, we see that we have a Reaper config zip ready for you, which uh, we are going to need. So we need to download this here. I already downloaded it, so I'm not going to bore you with that. And then if we downloaded it, we can go over to Reaper, which we have already opened. And we can go to the preferences. Preferences can be opened with by the menu either or straight away with command comma on a Mac. Uh, if you go here in the preference window to general, uh, then we see these two buttons here import the configuration or export the configuration. Now, Thomas and me have made a configuration for you, uh, which is mainly uh, cut through to, uh, to do video editing to for a video workflow. And that means a couple of things. Uh, before we are getting to that, we, let's import it. I already put it on my desktop. I'm correct. Uh, I'm not correct. It is in my download folder. There we are. Um, we can just download this and import it. I will not do that now because I already imported it, but it's just to show you how it actually works. It's really easy uh, to use. Uh, it is um, uh, a lot of things are already arranged for, and uh, I think it's a good idea we quickly get through the main features of it. So if we close this window again. Um, we're going to have a look at what we actually need for film in our workflow at the Hazelu. Um, it would be good to know that um, we have uh, a convention for frame rate and for sample rate. We work with 48 kilohertz sample rate for our uh, audio files in the video. And we work with 24 frames per second for the video. So let's see if we can find that here. We there is a project settings menu item on the main menu. And if we open that and look at the video, we can see a frame rate of 24 frames. That's what we're going to use. And furthermore, in the project settings, we nailed the project sample rate to 48,000 Hertz. 48,000 Hertz means that one second of sound is sampled 48,000 times to make up for a waveform. Later on we can look, see how I, that exactly looks like if we zoom into it on the highest factor. For now, um, I think it suffices to say that it's the way we are going to work. So check those both things out. It's really important for the workflow. Uh, as said, this has already been configured for you. You can, um, uh, in your configuration, change sometimes some things. 
you can exchange configurations with other people, but see that this is really fixed for you. 48 kilohertz and 24 frames per second. Then you're already well on the way. Now, why would you uh, change or exchange configurations? Um, as you can see, um, there is some general information here on where to store things, um, what uh, your keyboard, how your keyboard is reacting to certain keystrokes, uh, what exactly uh, is in the project files and how you want to how you want it to be saved. If you want to have it auto saved every five minutes, well, that's actually what we have pre-programmed for you. So backups are being made regularly and you cannot basically lose not any more than five minutes of work, which is really nice. Then for audio settings, you can uh, do this, uh, look through this and um, in the course of our tutorials you might want to change some things uh, you can change some things in the appearance etc etc there are many factors which can be taken into account and if you come so far that you make your own configuration and for instance you want to take your configuration to work on another machine you can export this configuration. So you get this screen, which lets you choose of what exactly you want to export. There are, as you can see, a lot of things. There are menu sets, there are scripts. Uh, well, whatever. Usually if you make it, if you want to export everything, it will be pretty big. As it looks here it says like 280 megabytes um, that's how you do that you can save it and then you get a file just as the one we saw before on import the one which is over here Oop. I meant here that's what you get and if you want to work on other uh, frame rates for some reason, you can basically make your configuration in that way that it works for another frame rate. Like if you really, really need some uh, 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second possible, you can just make another configuration, export that and use it whenever you need it. So that's one of the advantages of that. Okay, some other features connected to uh, the frame rate uh, we have installed for you is uh, this timeline up here. This timeline starts at 59 minutes. We have chosen a format of first the hour and then uh, the minutes and then the seconds and then the frames and actually Reaper has two timelines which is very practical because it uh, makes it more easy to um, calculate the bottom timeline we have chosen it to be absolute frames so an absolute frame count so we can zoom in here and then you can see all these frames appear. So now, why do we start at 59 minutes? Well, 59 minutes is um, it comes from uh, the old days with tape machines. Like uh, if you would start a session at zero 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 hours. Uh, zero hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds and zero frames. Then if you would rewind the tape and have a little bit of overshoot, then it would be at 23.59.xxxx. And 
then it would try to get even further back so it wouldn't stop rewinding. So that's at some point they thought, oh, this is not very practical. Uh, it must not go below zero. This is sort of like the, the, the millennium uh, bug at uh, the year 2000, for those who remember that. Um, that's why we start at 59 minutes instead of zero, zero, zero. Now, actually where we start the video is by convention at one hour. Well, usually if you have like an animatic or something and you're working on that, uh, you don't start with the titles, that's something you, you do in the end. Or maybe there is a little introduction or uh, I don't know, can be anything. So it can be a little bit longer before you start. So we give it an extra minute to um, comply with that. So basically these things are uh, the convention of how we work at the Hazalu in the animation studio. The next thing I would like to quickly show is uh, in our windows here. We have set up a window for you. It's all changeable as you would like. Uh, we'll show, we'll come to that later. As the English say, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And um, for now, it is suffice to know that there is an action window. This records basically all the actions which are uh, being done. It can also be reached here to show recent actions. Um, these are the things below here. The, those are the things, this is sort of a history, works as a history. But actions uh, can also be connected to a keyboard shortcut. And if you look through this whole list here, there's an enormous amount of possibilities which can all do one little thing. Is that handy? Yeah, actually it is, because we are using these uh, to at these actions to um, connect to a keyboard shortcut so we can um, access it very easily and we don't have to hover our mouse over the whole screen the whole time and make a lot of mileage. So as you can see for instance here um, there is a command to nudge. We'll co also come to that later, no worries. But you can see that there is shortcut, shortcuts attached to a certain command. Now, maybe you don't like the way uh, we put it up for you and you want to do your own shortcuts. You can easily change it here, you can delete it and you can add another one. Or if some friend has a really handy set of shortcuts available, you can import his or hers key map here or export it for somebody else. Or you can just export some. So it's all up to you basically. And if you import a key map, you can see that I have some key maps available on my computer. Um, I have my own map which I saved for work in my own studio. Um, there is a Thomas key map which I imported from Thomas to be able to, so we can work together on this project of recording the tutorials. And that's as easy as it goes. So you can just export it and import it as you like. And then we have made um, a list available also on the Google Drive. I don't know if I can find it easily, but let's have a look. It should probably be in Google Docs somewhere. Questions, where to picture. Ah, here we go. 
let's have a look. We will all make this available so you can just check it out, go through it. You see all the categories up here and the individual commands with their shortcuts after it. They're all sort of grouped, but of course some are overlapping and might be, be uh, shown twice or maybe even three times. Um, this is how our um, default situation in the studio is going to be. So um, that's how we work and we would like to welcome you to the rest of our tutorials. Thank you very much and see you in tutorial one. Goodbye.